Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Franklin High School. Yeah, all right. My name is Drew O'Connell, and I'm the proud principal at Franklin High School. And I'm also a Franklin graduate. Thank you. And it's with Quaker pride and pleasure that I introduce myself and welcome you into our beautiful community today. I'd like to share just a small snippet of Franklin's history while I have your attention today. As you may know, Franklin is one of Seattle's oldest open high schools with our first graduating class of 1912. We actually have signatures on our walls and in the rafters in our attic dating back that far. So it goes without saying that the Quaker spirit is a cornerstone of the Seattle experience and for many students, families, and staff. That same spirit is alive and well today and we're honored to continue to honor Franklin's legacy in all that we do. As is usually the case when we hold events like these, there are Franklin graduates in attendance. Do we have any Quaker alumni here today? That's wonderful. Welcome home. Welcome home. So I'm always excited to welcome, or to open our doors and welcome the community uh, into our space and appreciate what we appreciate every single day. And that's the beauty of our diverse community. We have the best students in the city of Seattle. And we're so very thankful to Mayor Durkin and the residents of Seattle for investing in them through the Seattle Promise. You only need to spend a short amount of time in our halls and classrooms to understand and appreciate the focus not only on, uh, excuse me, not only on high expectations for collaborative teaching and learning, but also on how we continuously develop and grow as a community. We center that growth on fostering love for one another by building meaningful relationships with our students and their families, and by using our voice and especially the voice of our scholars, to stand up for racial equity and those furthest from educational justice. Thank you to Superintendent Juno for leading this effort in Seattle Public Schools. That's the essence of Franklin, and we'll continue to lead by amplifying our voices for these ideals in our 108th year and beyond. So without anything further, please join me in giving a warm Franklin welcome to our very own Seattle Public Schools Superintendent, Denise Juno. Thank you. And good morning. Thank you for that great introduction, Principal O'Connell. It is great to be back here at the home of the Quakers and here with Mayor Durkin, who is a true partner in helping all Seattle Public School students achieve their dreams. The district recently adopted a new strategic plan, Seattle Excellence. Seattle Excellence is laser focused on ensuring life success for students of color furthest from educational justice. From cradle to career, the city of Seattle is lockstep with us in making sure our students are fully prepared for a bright future. The city's budget dedicates investments in preschool, wraparound care, it makes college attainable for all Seattle Public Schools graduates, all critical supports in achievement of Seattle excellence. I'm especially excited about the potential of Seattle Promise and the great opportunities that will arise because of our partnership. We now have the potential to make a college education and career certification a reality for every prepared Seattle Public School student graduate. My favorite part of being superintendent is spending time with our students. They are fierce, they are brave, and they are focused on all the right things. They give me great hope for our collective future. It is my pleasure to introduce one of our wonderful Quakers, Jaden Thomas. Jaden is Seattle excellence. He is a senior this year at Franklin and has already been accepted to Benedict College. When not leading the Quaker dance team or chairing the principal's cabinet, you can find him representing the senior class as the yearbook advisor and running his own small business called Wonder of Cupcakes by Jay. Please help me in welcoming Jaden Thomas, student leader and huge Beyonce fan. Thank you. <laughs> Good
Good morning. My name is Jaden Thomas, and I am a senior here at Franklin High School. Over the course of my four years here at Franklin, I've had the honor of being the chairman of Principal's Cabinet, a lead in the drama department, and I've held officer positions in various of the clubs here. Outside of Franklin, I'm also the vice president of the Seattle NAACP Youth Council. I run a cupcake business called Cupcakes by Jay, and I am the captain of the Dolls and Gents Drill Team and Drumline. I was recently accepted to Benedict College, and I plan to, and I plan to attend an HBCU next fall. <laughs> Attending college has always been a dream of mine, but a barrier for me and along with a few of my peers here at Franklin has always been how will we pay for college. Many of us have always have, have had the desire and the grades to attend a four-year university, but it isn't always attainable because of the tuition and board expenses. The Seattle Promise is a scholarship program that will fund up to 90 credits to receive an associate's degree at any Seattle college. I'm happy to say that now the scholarship is open to Franklin High School students. And a special thank you to my new auntie, Mayor Jenny Durkin. <laughs> And today, I have the pleasure of introducing her, and who will be speaking to us today about her budget for next year. Please welcome my new auntie, Jenny Durkin. All right, Jaden, that was amazing. Uh, I got to meet him last year in this, the teen summer musical. He's phenomenal in everything he does. For the rest of the seniors, don't feel like you're slacking just because you haven't gotten into a college yet. Way to go, Jaden. Council President Harrell, members of the City Council, Superintendent Juno, City Attorney Pete Holmes, community leaders, members of my cabinet, and the amazing students of Franklin High School. <laughs> Good morning. Good almost afternoon. Th thank you all for being here today. And uh, Council Member Harrell, thank you for not wearing your bulldog gear. <laughs> Once a year, I get the chance to present my budget to the City Council and the people of Seattle. And from the start of the Seattle squeeze to our February freeze, it's been a big year in Seattle, and it is great to be here at Franklin High School. Yeah. Now, back in the day when I was a young lawyer, I loved coming to Franklin to help with the mock trial team, to be in the history classes. I was a high school English teacher, and high school's where it's at. You guys have your future ahead of it, and it's going to be amazing. This morning, I wanted to be here because my budget seizes on our chance to move ahead on all the things we care about and the things for which students at Franklin High School are the epicenter in advocating for. Free college, affordable housing, justice and equity, protecting workers, and more transit, bike infrastructure, and safer streets. Seattle's changing. And with our budget, we can decide what kind of city we want to be. Our budget reflects the present and the future we want for the people of Seattle and for our youth like the students here today. Look, I admit it, I love Seattle. From the coffee shops to the grocery store to town halls to round tables, I love meeting and talking to the people of this city. I hear a lot of hope but I hear anxiety too. Mostly I hear shared values, shared priorities, and a shared vision of a better future for our city. Together, Council, we know that Seattle needs a government that works, that delivers basic city services that residents demand and deserve. But basic city services are only the floor. We can and must do much more than that. While the other Washington is all about division, here in Seattle, we believe in solutions. We believe that Seattle must be an inclusive and just city 
that's truly open to everyone, that says that immigrants and refugees are welcome here. Where a child care provider or a teacher can actually afford to live in the same community as the children they care for. And where our Uber and Lyft drivers can afford to live in the same city as the people they drive. I sat down with some drivers in the last weeks and they told me how sometimes they drive 10, 12 hours per day hard, exhausting work, and every kind of issue shows up in their cars. They're working full time, and then some, and still they barely make ends meet. We can do better. They deserve at least a minimum wage and reasonable expenses. <laughs> Council, cabinet, all of us together, we must continue to dismantle systemic racism and injustice wherever we see it. And students of Franklin, this is your town. We know we must give you the opportunities and the skills so you can build the city of the future. That's why this budget will provide free college, free transit, and pathways to amazing jobs. And in these tough times, we must also tap into our common humanity. And remember, we are all in this together. We must do more to help our neighbors experiencing homelessness. We must mo do more to lift people up. We must build more housing, especially housing near transit, so that nurses assistants, restaurant workers, and teachers who work right here in this building can actually live in the city that they help make great. And, and speaking of the teachers and staff of Franklin, can we give them a round of applause? Yeah. On Friday, students from throughout Seattle led the city in a strike for climate. How many students here participated? All right. And with this budget, we will act urgently on climate. We must ensure the future of our planet. This budget keeps the lights on and invests in progress on some of Seattle's toughest problems. Basic city services include things like picking up the garbage, clean energy, plowing the snow, filling the potholes, keeping people and goods moving during the squeeze. Tackling tougher issues is harder, but it means delivering on that promise of opportunity, including the two years free college for every student here if you want it. Yeah. But that's only the start. Then it means helping you get the great jobs and careers that you deserve. It means a minimum wage and expenses for Uber and Lyft drivers. It means, that's right. <laughs> it means building more affordable housing in every part of this city. And with this budget, we will usher in a new era in the fight against homelessness. Yes. And we will continue our other big fights for climate, for justice, for making sure that our city stays a welcoming, vibrant city where folks can actually afford to live. This budget, this budget's about our future, and I mean our future. Students, the first priority of my budget is all about building opportunity for you and the young people in Seattle. <laughs> Together, we must build a city where your zip code, your race, your place of birth, all the things that make you who you are do not deny, decide your destiny. 
If we do our job right, students, you get to decide your destiny. Too few of our high schoolers graduate ready to participate in the economy of Seattle. If we don't close the opportunity gap in school, we know we cannot beat the inequities that exist in Seattle today. Are there any seniors in the house? Come on. All right. Seniors, thanks for being here. There you go. And if you do your job, I know you really came to see Jaden and not me, but that's all right. All right. If you do your job, if you graduate, we have an option for you and for every student at a Seattle public high school. Yeah, even your rivals at Garfield and Beach. Uh, the Seattle Promise College Tuition Program will give you two years free college at any of our three Seattle, Seattle colleges. And we'll help you with those other obstacles like books, fees, childcare, transportation. We want to make sure that if you do what we ask you, we're there for you. But we know that's just a start. We're taking other steps too. We created a new internship program for students who are taking advantage of the Seattle Promise program. That gives those students the chance to have paid, and I mean paid, internships. Yeah, we're talking. <laughs> At some of Seattle's most innovative companies and labor unions, you can gain experience and make progress on your career goals. People like Kenneth Vera, he's the first person in his family to go to college. He's a Seattle Promise student and doing an Opportunity Promise internship at Expedia. And this fall, he shifts over to an insurp at SEIU 775. <laughs> Those are the opportunities you deserve and all our youth deserve. We know these programs work. They help move students move from school to training to jobs, from the best labor apprenticeships to tech to any field you can imagine, we want to open the doors. To every student here, like I said, this is your city. Whether you want to be an iron worker who builds the new buildings downtown, the biotech worker who invents the cure to cancer in those buildings, or you want to be the person who owns the buildings, we are with you. We want you to reach for your dreams, including dreams of making it in the creative economy, Film, the arts, music, and culture. Our creative industries are not just good for our economy. They make our city better, that vibrant, soulful city that we want to be. We want the amazing, talented children and kids and youth and students who perform in theater to have a place in Seattle's creative economy for generations to come. With that goal, this budget will invest in work to build Seattle's creative industries and make it an economic priority. Our Office of Film and Music, working in partnership with our great entertainment community, will expand and lead our new inclusive creative industry program to keep building our city as the future. We want Jaden to be on the stage again, showing everyone else how to do it. But look, we know as a city, we cannot wait until high school to build opportunity. We have to support families and children. That's why this proposed budget makes new, unprecedented investments in childcare. Yay. <laughs> and I know what a big deal this is. As a working mom, childcare was really important to my partner and I. And I really want to thank Councilmember Mosqueda and Gonzalez and Sally Bagshaw for their commitment to working on expanding access to childcare in Seattle. We all know it's hard to find and it's getting more expensive. So our budget will nearly double our childcare program. We will ensure that parents of up to more than 600 more children can get help they need with their childcare bills. We have to start early if we want our children to have the best Seattle jobs. The second priority of my budget to is invest in safer and more just communities. Because of the leadership of Chief Carmen Best and our officers, we have become the mo national model for crisis intervention and de-escalation. 
Crime is down compared to this time last year. But as the city has grown, so have the challenges of our urban environment. That's why my budget works to address those challenges. It adds new officers and expands our community service officer program. It supports community-based emphasis patrols, so there's more officers walking and biking in the communities they serve. It expands our fire department's Health One program, a team of specially trained firefighters and a civilian specialist that can help people with 911 calls that aren't really emergencies, but where people still need help, like people with, who need help with substance abuse or accessing services. Just like Medic One became a national model, I think Health One can too. As we announced two weeks ago, my budget will also help fund four new pilot programs to address the complex intersection of homelessness, the criminal justice system, behavioral health, and substance abuse disorder. Our system simply is not working. Too many people are cycling through the criminal justice system, impacting them and their communities. They're not getting the help they need. We have to change that. And that requires separate city, state, and county agencies coming to work together to get it done. If we're going to be the city of the future, people must be able to thrive and be safe where they live, work, and play. But public safety is about a lot more than police and firefighters. True public safety means that everyone, regardless of where they live or what their background is, has access to real opportunity. And we mean real opportunity. That's why this budget, we're renewing our commitment to not just community-based policing, but to shared opportunity like free transit, college, and jobs. And also by investing in restorative justice and youth safety. We should never give up on any youth. This budget also invests in one of the most challenging moral things of our times, our homeless crisis. Over the last year, we have made investments that are having an impact. The city is doing more than ever to help our neighbors who need their help and are living unsheltered. We've created greater accountability, and we've helped more people. We've helped more people and ensured we do the most good with our resources. Just this year, we've made progress. We're serving more households, moving more households to permanent housing, and preventing people from becoming homeless in the first place. And while we have a long ways to go, we're doing better to address the fact that people of color are disproportionately impacted and lag behind services. We must change that. <laughs> By making our shelter system more humane and centering it on what people actually need, we are moving more people out of homelessness than basic shelters ever have. The expansion of our navigation team has saved lives and moved hundreds of people to safer places. And this spring, for the first time since 2012, unlike the other large cities on the West Coast, the annual point in time count shows the number of people experiencing homelessness in King County and Seattle has declined. That's progress, but still too many of our neighbors are suffering. So this budget will make historic investments in a new era and a new approach that will help prevent people from falling into homelessness in the first place and help connect people with the housing and the services that they need. We know what works. We just have to be able to do it, and how we do it matters. After years of talk, we're actually creating what our region needs, ending the era of a siloed, fragmented approach to homelessness. Imagine one unified system that has the authority, the responsibility, and the resources under one roof, and that centers its work on the lives and the voices of the people being served. Earlier this month, King County Executive Dale Constantine and I transmitted legislation to our respective councils. 
our 2020 budget follows through on the promise and funds that new unified response to homelessness. We must continue our progress. Seattle cannot be a city of the future unless it lifts up those who are left behind. <clears throat> We know that our lack of affordable housing is helping fuel our homeless crisis. The scope of housing needs is enormous. It's getting harder and harder for low-income and middle-income people to live in Seattle. We need more affordable housing in every part of this city. Together, we've made immense progress. In 2017 and 2018, the city and its partners invested over $700 million to build more housing for low- and middle-income neighbors. And council members, your dedicated work for more affordable housing has been so important and so inspiring. Thank you for your years of hard work. You help bring affordable housing choices through the mandatory housing affordability law. Moved ahead on building affordable housing at Fort Lawton. Increase backyard cottages and in-law apartments. Thank you for everything you're doing and for your commitment to make Seattle a more affordable place. Thank you. <laughs> this summer, I announced the Housing Seattle Now initiative, a new surge of investments in both low and middle income housing. We want it in every community across our city. With my budget, we have the chance to continue the momentum for more housing. We can invest over $78 million from the sale of the Mercer properties to build and support more affordable housing and prevent displacement. Too many people have been pushed out of our city. Today, I am also proposing two new investments for housing. First, we're going to take advantage of a new state law that lets us use existing revenues and add another $25 million this year to awards to build more housing. And second, as I shared last week, I am proposing my fair share plan to make a modest tax on Uber and Lyft drive so that there is minimum wage and we can make sure that we invest another $52 million in housing near transit over the next five years. Look, we grew so fast, we fell far behind on housing and social services, policy and transportation. We need to catch up. As we build more housing, we also must continue to build a more connected city. We simply don't have enough transit, and we don't have enough safe, affordable, and reliable options for people to get around, no matter where you live. Taking transit, Biking, walking, rolling, and carpooling must be a real alternative to driving alone in a car. We can't meet our climate goals unless we do that and do it with urgency. Here in Seattle, we have a lot to be proud of. During the Viata closure, we showed we could change and that people could get out of their cars. We need to keep that going. Recently, Seattle was called the best city in our country for public transit. I would have just stopped with the best city in the country. But over the last two years, we've increased our investments in King County Metro bus service by 71%. We put a free ORCA card in the hands of every Seattle public high school student. All right, students, give me a shout out if you're using that ORCA card. There we go. That's right. And as we increase access to transit, we also are building a safer, more connected bike network. Over the next five years, we are ready to deliver an additional 50 miles of projects like bike lanes and greenways. But it's not enough. That is why this budget invests additional revenues to fund projects that were not previously funded through the Bike Master Plan. There's a, there's a biker out there. 
We also know that if we are going to stay a world-class city, we must have a world-class transit system. So I've identified the funding we need to fully fund our downtown streetcar. It's going to be very cool. We will have a connected streetcar route from Capitol Hill to Wing Luke to the new waterfront to South Lake Union and Mohai. Imagine being down on the waterfront and you can get to Mohai or Wing Luke or anywhere in between. Seattle deserves world-class transit. We will also continue to increase bus service through the Seattle Transportation Benefit District and will keep expanding access to free ORCA from high school students to Promise Scholars to our Seattle Housing Authority residents. We must make transit available for as many people as possible at a zero or low cost. We also must recommit to our goal of Vision Zero, our plan to end traffic deaths and serious injuries on our city streets by 2030. We're not doing enough and the numbers are going in the wrong direction. We must act with urgency so that roads like Rainier Avenue become safer for all users. And this budget funds that work. Seattle leads the nation in transit use, and we still need more and better transit. I can announce today that we will invest $31 million in new safety, bike, pedestrian, and transit improvements. And we'll invest $16.7 million of the revenue from the sale of the Mercer properties in Vision Zero transportation safety projects in every corner of our city. From new protected bike lanes to better sidewalks, or to any sidewalks in some neighborhoods, to new transit, pedestrian, and bike-only streets that connect with light rail, everyone must have safe streets and a place to walk in every neighborhood in this city. And thanks to some additional resources available through our Transportation Benefit District, Next year, we will be able to buy 25,000 hours of bus service in addition. And we'll invest another $4 million in first and last mile connections to transit so we can get as many people as possible to safe, reliable, efficient transit. And yes, we'll invest in bus stop shelters, benches, red bus only lanes, and Head Start signals for buses. Finally, I can tell you, it's true. We will have set a goal of over 90 blocks of new red bus-only lanes by the end of 2020. And students, we need you in Olympia. You are showing up. We need you in Olympia because we want to get a block the box bill finally passed. In the city of the future, you have to have safe and reliable transportation choices, and this budget invests in that future. But none of this progress, none of these investments will deliver on this budget are possible without the incredible team of the city of Seattle. Yeah, you can clap for them. <laughs> Nearly every day, 12,000 public servants go to work ready to deliver for the people of Seattle. So I just want to say to my colleagues here at the city, thank you. Thank you for your service. I am proud of what we do together. I'm excited about what's ahead. And I know how hard your jobs are and the pressures you face. So thanks for all you do for the city of Seattle. And I just want to give a little pitch. So students, as you're thinking about life after high school, I hope you give the city of Seattle a chance and look at jobs there, too. Yeah. 
Members of the City Council, I look forward to working with you to cement this plan as a guide for our work in the coming year. For some of you, voting on this budget will be among your final votes as a member of the City Council. Council President Harrell, Council Member Bagshaw, Council Member O'Brien, who might have an excused absence, and Council Member Pacheco, thank you for all you've done for the City of Seattle. Can we give them a hand? Seriously, they have done so much. You students will realize as you go on, when you run for city council and become mayor, how much fun it can be. <laughs> for all of us here, I hope that our story can be that we work together to invest in a safer, more just Seattle. That we built more low and middle income housing. That we ushered in that new era in a fight against homelessness in our region. That we left a city more connected with safer choices for getting around, that we built more pathways to opportunity for our young people, that we invested in solving problems and building a future, that these students in a generation really are running this city. We have that chance, and I think we should seize it together. Once again, let's take our progressive Seattle values and turn them into action. action that does the most good for the most people. Let's make that our story. Let's carry on that work. And now, let's go back to work. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Franklin High School. Have a great year. Thanks very much.